Vice President for the Climate Energy Program at Third Way, a think tank focused on using every clean energy tool we can to get the United States and the world on the fastest, fairest path to net zero emissions by 2050. I first want to thank all of you for joining us here today and wanted to note that this ceremony is currently being live streamed on New Scale and Third Way's social media channels. So a warm welcome to those of you who are joining online, wherever in the world that may be. The science of climate change is clear. We know that if we don't move aggressively to address the root causes and keep warming at or below 1.5 degrees C, we'll increasingly feel the effects of climate change in our daily lives. A net zero future is dependent upon the transition away from fossil fuels, as is our global energy security and affordability. This past year, we've seen devastation across the globe. Raging wildfires in Siberia and North America, lethal flooding across China and Europe, and fierce storms battering the East Coast of the United States all in the backdrop of the economic fallout caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. This has showcased just how important it is for governments to not only transform their energy sectors to be more resilient, but also their economies. We see a strong example of this right here in Europe, where soaring energy prices have accelerated countries like the United Kingdom and France to reduce their reliance on fossil fuels, and pursue clean energy options like nuclear power. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and French President Emmanuel Macron continue to build out existing wind and solar while also focusing investments in nuclear power and hydrogen innovation. This highlights not only that nations understand the importance of diversified clean energy portfolios, but the growing acceptance of nuclear energy that has culminated into widespread nuclear innovation as well. As we move towards a more sustainable future, we will need to build out that diverse set of clean energy technologies, including nuclear energy, hydrogen, and carbon capture, as well as wind and solar. Deployment of innovative nuclear power plants, particularly small modular plants, is an absolutely essential step. Nuclear energy is our largest carbon-free energy source. And let me say that again because it is very important for the conversation we're having today and throughout COP. Nuclear is the largest source of carbon-free energy that we have. And it is increasingly rightfully recognized as a crucial component of meeting our sustainability goals by organizations like the IPCC and IEA. Small modular reactors, or SMRs, are reliable and durable energy sources and can act independent of large power grids with a lower initial investment. They can help countries affordably meet their energy and economic needs, create more economic opportunity, and enhance energy security. But innovation is only half the battle. If we want to make substantial changes in decarbonizing our energy systems, we must work together, especially on advanced nuclear, and set global standards for emissions reductions. We have a unique opportunity here today to showcase the power of global cooperation by leveraging international diplomacy and collaborating with our European allies and show that we can bolster nuclear innovation and fast track our path to zero. And that is why we are all gathered here. And we were thrilled with the announcement on Tuesday by US Special Envoy for Climate John Kerry and Romanian President Klaus Johannes that Romania will be a first mover on small reactor technology. And here today, we are honored to be hosting this event with New Scale Power and Nuclear Electrica that will bring to fruition this commitment with plans for building a first 
of a kind new scale reactor in Romania. This is a historic moment for climate, and we are eager to help shape international commitments for the better. Shortly, we will hear from John Hopkins, the chairman and CEO of New Scale Power, Virgil Popescu, Romania's Minister for Energy, Cosman Gita, the CEO of Nuclear Electrica, and Justin Friedman of the U.S. Department of State. It is now my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, my friend John Hopkins, Chairman and CEO of New Scale. Thank you, John. Appreciate it, buddy. Well, Cosman and I were just sitting here thinking, well, we never thought this day was going to happen. So we greatly appreciate everybody being here. Thank you for joining us as we commemorate our important partnership between New Scale and Nuclear Electrica to advance clean, emissions-free commercial nuclear technology in Romania. I'd like to start by acknowledging our honored participants, Virgil Pepescu, Minister of Energy for Romania, Chief Executive Officer of Nuclear Electra, Cosman Ghia, Justin Freeman, Senior Advisor for Commercial Competitiveness in Nuclear Energy, Bureau of International Security and Nonproliferation at the U.S. Department of State, and of course, Josh Free, our, who made the introductory comments. We also have with us today senior representation from a customer in Poland, KGHM, uh, the C CEO of uh, NEI, uh, Maria Korsna, Kor Korsna, excuse me, the Ro Romanian ambassador to the UK, uh, Laura Popescu, ambassador, thank you for coming. Um, Kirsten Cutler from State Department, who's been invaluable in her assistance to New Scale and other advanced reactors moving forward. So thank you all for joining us, and um, we are truly honored to have here today as we celebrate another step towards advancing the deployment of small modular reactor technology and meeting our global climate ambitions. Today's agreement between Nuclear Electric and New Scale comes at a pivotal time as we meet here in Glasgow to discuss the urgency of accelerating the clean energy transition and getting to net zero. What I hope you take away from today is how New Scale's SMRs can support international climate goals, mitigate the world's impact of climate change, and strengthen global prosperity. A partnership with Nuclear Electrica began more than two years ago when we signed a Memorandum of Understanding to evaluate the de development, licensing, and construction of a nuclear SMR power plant in Romania. Today's agreement advances this commitment and creates the opportunity for Romania to deploy the first SMR in Europe and bring in nuclear supply chain opportunities to Romania, as well as a vehicle to support capacity building and provide new scale power plant operational workforce development to others seeking to deploy the technology within the region. Despite the challenges of the pandemic, the past year has been record breaking for new scale. In August 2020, New Scale made history as the first and only company to receive an SMR design approval from the U.S. Neg Nuclear Regulatory Commission. In July of this year, the Commission published the proposed rule that would certify the nuclear design, a crucial step towards constructing and installing these game-changing SMRs, not just in the U.S., but in the world. These scalable power plants, which can house up to four, six, or 12 individual modules, offer the benefits of carbon-free nuclear power and provide reduced financial commitments and production costs while providing features, capability, and performance yet to be seen in the nuclear energy market. I would be remiss not to again acknowledge the incredible support we received from the U.S. government. Representatives are there to here today between the U.S. and Romanian governments has laid the groundwork for today's important announcement in impactful and, and in tangible ways. The U.S. Trade and Development Agency, for example, provided funding assistance in support of conducting site suitability and other related activities. The Department of State and the U.S. Embassy in Bucharest have been instrumental in helping to build our partnership with Romania. And of course, the Department of Energy has offered incredible support and bringing our technology to the level of commercial readiness. My sincere thanks, and we are incredibly humbled and grateful for your continued partnership and support. And I'd like to again thank you for being here and this, uh, for this ceremonial signing. Thank you.
Thank you again, John. It is now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Cosman Gita, the CEO of Nuclear Electrica, Romania's leading energy company and an experienced nuclear developer. Now, Nuclear Electrica plays a crucial role in carbon-free energy production by contributing over 18% of the country's nuclear energy and a third of the total carbon-free energy. And under Cosman's leadership, Nuclear Electrica continues to pave the way to meet Romania's climate goals. And I'm excited to welcome here, here to the stage. Cosman. Thank you, Josh. Uh, thank you, John, for the warm introduction, and uh, thank you all for joining us today. I also wanted to uh, like to honor our distinguished guests, uh, Mr. J uh, Justin Friedman, uh, Mr. Ingemar Inquist from the CEO of the uh, World Association of Nuclear Operators, Maria, um, uh, Mr. Popescu, John. Uh, this is an exciting mo moment, and I'm proud, honored, and deeply privileged to meet you all here at COP, where countries actually take a bold action on escalating the climate crisis. We're really in a race to achieve net zero, sustainable, inclusive future. And I'm talking this on behalf of my generation and the generations that are coming. As COVID-19 united us um, as nations to join forces in a common battle, the energy crisis and decarbonization stringent goals are also bringing us together to make a strong commitment to a cleaner future um, for the next generations. Each of us as nations are owners of the common vision of achieving net zero energy. Um, and this common goal unites us and empowers us to create a better future for the generations to come. So it's up to us at the same time to spread the empowerment of our nations to our young generations and to the working force in the many industries that need energy transitions to meet net zero targets. As we're decarbonizing, we look forward to deploying new technology so we can give an economic continuity to the uh, lives of these communities that have served us throughout the years very well. And we're all working for their futures and you know their children's futures. This morning when I was preparing for this meeting, I ran into the lobby of our hotel into a little girl and I asked her how she sees the future. She came with her father who was a delegated cop and she replied very fast, eager and joyful. I'll grow up very fast, very smart and I'll have a great job and also children. <laughs> she said in very simple words, what we're trying here to envision and create for her generation and the generations to come a stable, peaceful, clean, prosperous future where our children can develop and reach their highest potential in a clean environment. We're responsible to build this future for them um, and it's our duty to act now. As Romania's energy needs are evolving, we need new sources of clean energy to meet our decarbonization targets and ensure energy security and stability. The transition to clean energy requires more sustainable, zero carbon energy um, and cost-effective energy. And I think nuclear is one of the basis for this. Large reactors offer a steady base load, whereas small modular reactors will bring to Romania additional benefits of, uh, in terms of balancing, load following, and uh, flexibility that we all need in our grids. So, we're bringing now an energy mix and a technology that is safe, clean, resilient, scalable, and affordable, matching exactly the goals that we're trying to put here at COP for the next generation. And if we're talking about energy, we need to ask ourselves, what is energy? Well, energy is security. And SMRs contribute, besides meeting the energy security targets, to future security by maintaining, creating new jobs, and by contributing to the local budgets and to the local industry and economy by providing projects to the local com uh, uh, companies and affordable and an affordable source of energy that can grow in, that industries can grow on and be competitive and romania can aim at, p at a pioneering role as it became a leader in the nuclear energy through its safe resilient operations and having one of the top performing plants in the world 
So we're excited to uh, be one of the first countries in the region to deploy new scale SMRs, a certified technology and a hub for the, po uh, for the production of SMRs components and assembly for potential other projects in the region, as well as a base for preparing and supporting the operatorship of this new technology in countries within the three Cs, such as Poland and Bulgaria. And here I really want to thank uh, uh, DOE for all the support it did in advancing this technology, and also the State Department for the gracious support it's giving us in terms of deploying a simulator that will help us achieve these goals and train the new generation that we're preparing for the region and at Chernavoda. This year we are hiring almost 500 people, so we're investing in the new generation and we're excited to train them in the new technologies that are going to come in parallel with the existing technologies that have proven our, um, our, our success. So we're, we're proud here to stand with NewSkill and lead the way to 100% carbon free um, future and with exciting times uh, come exciting projects. And I thank you all for being here and celebrating this signing uh, today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cosman. I'm honored now to introduce our next speaker, Romanian Minister of Energy, Virgil Daniel Popescu, who is here representing the Romanian government. And under his leadership, Romania has been making incredible strides towards diversifying its energy portfolio, and we are very honored to have him here today. Mr. Minister, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me here. And I want to start with a simple question. A simple question with a very simple answer. What is energy? What means energy? And the answer is very, very simple. Energy means security. Security for our country, security for your country, security for all countries. And we have, I have a phrase, a statement that I always do it. If we want net zero, if we want decarbonization, we could not do it without nuclear energy. So nuclear energy is essentially, is essentially in achieving net zero the, the goal that all countries that are here wanted to have it. So it all started, let's remember, it all started one year ago when in Washington was, si was signed the intergovernmental agreement between the government of Romania and the government of the United States and was approved by the Romanian parliament this year, in June, if I remember. And Tuesday, two days ago, our president Klaus Johannes and Secretary Kerry announced the first deployment of the first SMRs in Europe, in Romania, and and becoming Romania a hub, a technological hub from SMRs. So today I salute and support the signing of the teaming between the two companies based on the long history of our two countries. I thank our American partners for supporting and endorsing the nuclear program in Romania and inspiring us to become regional leaders for tomorrow's. It's an honor to be here and be part of the change. We are in crisis, but a crisis which can be the opportunity for the world's leader reaction to open towards a new level of sustainability and responsibility. It's the beginning of a new energy revolution, and it's our responsibility and duty to build a sustainable future for the next generation, to prepare the next generation to secure them education, quality jobs and life and performance industry and sustainable projects. I see small modular reactor as being the legacy of our generation and building the next generation future. Based on integrated national plan in the field of energy and climate changes, Romania plans to reduce the CO2 emission by 55% until 2030, and it's important, de it's important dependency from 20.8 today to 17.8 in 2013. The development of new capacity by 2030 is essentially, is essentially as 80% of thermal groups exceeded their regular life and 66 of CO2 emissions are generated by the power sector. Nuclear energy has an essential role in achieving this decarbonization target and ensures the energy transition to a carbon-free economy, currently contributing 33% in total CO2-free energy production in Romania. After the implementation of the strategic investment project, this contribution will increase exponentially while also ensuring energy security for Romania and the region. We are building this project 
for the generation to come to secure a clean future, jobs, education in groundbreaking technological advanced field and prosperity for families and communities. Building an op and operating a small modular reactor is safe, is a safe technological advanced solution it, with proven environmental benefits of clean, emission-free energy, bringing direct socio-economic benefits to the community. It serves and generates continuous prosperity for regional industry and economy. Currently, currently the nuclear energy industry in Romania employs about 12,000 jobs in the horizontal industry, and its annual contribution of the national GDP is of 5.7 billion industry, with also supporting the reduction of more than 10 million CO2 emissions. A six-model SMR, that means 462 megawatts, plant will, would avoid over 4 million tons of CO2 emission per year, as compared to coal, the equivalent of taking 6.6 .6 million cars off the road for a year, while it's also creating local jobs and benefits for the industry. Our aim is to place SMRs on existing coal plant sites, achieving carbon reduction, while also preserving jobs and tax revenue and ensuring an acceptable, acceptable transition for existing coal power plant, workers and community and local business. Most notably, new-scale innovative multimodule power plant design means that new-scale plant could produce a reliable, clean electricity for the grid while allocating one or more module to economically produce hydrogen when electricity demand is low. When the first ever small modular reactor, SMR, has received U.S. Nuclear Regulator Commission, NRC design approval, new scale is a safe, reliable and scalable advanced nuclear technology to meet our needs and improve the quality of life for people of Romania. In the end, I want to emphasize that after this day, Romania will strengthen his strategic partnership with the United States in the field of energy and will become a regional hub of this technology, of this module, small and modular reactor technology in Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And I'm delighted now to welcome up to our stage Justin Friedman, representing the United States here today. Justin is the Senior Advisor for Commercial Competitiveness for nuclear energy in the Nuclear Energy Bureau of International Security and Nonproliferation at the United States State Department. Justin? Thanks. Well, I've got an interesting contrast here because I'm the last speaker before the actual signing, uh, and every speaker before me has said in one form or another everything that I've got in my own comments. So I'll try and save it, say it a little bit shorter, um, because, I'll, it, because I have the shortest remarks, I have the longest title. So let's see if we can't uh, move this along and then get to our signing ceremony, which is what we're all here for. Um, Good afternoon, everyone. I guess my name is Justin Friedman. I won't repeat my title because it's too long, um, but Minister Popescu, New Scale CEO John Hopkins, uh, Nuclear Electrica CEO Cosmin Gita, uh, Madam Ambassador, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's truly an honor for me. Oh, and I should say, Josh Reed and your team at, at uh, Third Way, thank you again for organizing this today. Uh, it's a real honor for me to represent the United States government at this historic signing ceremony, which will strengthen the links between two great countries and two great companies, uh, a Romanian company and an American company. This groundbreaking partnership will help us achieve our shared global climate goals. As has already been mentioned two days ago, Special Presidential Envoy for Climate Policy, John Kerry, and Romanian President Klaus Johannes announced Romania's intent to build a first-of-a-kind U.S. Small Modular Reactor, or SMR, uh, power plant. Last night, Under Secretary for, of State for Arms Control and International Security, Bonnie Jenkins, announced that the U.S. would further support Romania's efforts to become a leader in SMR technology uh, by deploying, uh, in SMR deployment, I should say, by funding development of an SMR simulator at a Romanian university. Today, New Scale and SN Nuclear Electrica take an important step forward toward realizing a world, the world's first commercial deployment of an SMR 
through their teaming agreement. President Biden has made clear that addressing the climate crisis is at the center of our foreign policy. I am honored to witness the announcement of a partnership that matches the president's challenge with concrete action. Like all strong partnerships, everyone will benefit. New Scale will deploy its safe, secure, U.S. regulator-approved leading-edge technology on an accelerated timeline. Nuclear Electrica will demonstrate its leadership as an operator of a state-of-the-art nuclear facility with the potential to become a regional hub for further deployments. The Romanian people will get an advanced zero-carbon energy source. Workers in the United States and in Romania will get wonderful, well-compensated, high-technology jobs. And the world will benefit from significant carbon emissions reductions as these SMRs move to replace coal-fired generators, not just in Romania, but we hope throughout Central Europe and beyond. So I congratulate NuScale and SN Nuclear Electrica on today's achievement. This is an important step in our efforts here at COP26 to work together to limit average, global average temperature rise to 1.5 degrees centigrade this decade and achieve net zero by 2050, as the science tells us is necessary. Thank you all very much. Thanks. Thank you very much. And now to mark this historic moment, we will move on to the signing of the official documents between New Scale Power and Nuclear Electrica. So if uh, both Cosman and John, if you could join us. We have pens below, and each of you has the document to sign. If you can each sign to them and then exchange copies. <laughs> and when we're done, gentlemen, if we can move over here and we'll take a couple of more photographs of the signed documents. We can just invite Minister Popescu to also join for one photo photograph before we move on to the next part of our conversation. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you. We'll be moving to our fireside chat with uh, both John and Cosman, if you could join us on stage.
So thank you both again for joining us on this truly historic and exciting day for climate, for Romania, and for the United States. And my first question is going to go to John. At Third Way, we've been following SMRs for years now. And can you talk a little bit more about how close are we to the deployment of small modular reactor technology? Well, I'd just like to say, you know, in, in my presentation earlier, having got through the the rigor of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission last year in August really opened the aperture for us. The other thing is, during that time, we, we spent close to $500 million U.S. going through that process. And a lot of it had to do with the engineering, all the proof that you had to, with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Although we're an advanced light reactor, they, the NRC only predominantly knows large-scale reactors. So we had to do a lot of proof, a lot of, you know, um, with the fact that we don't need ACDC power or we don't need additional water or we don't need operator intervention if, this, if something were to occur, you had to prove it and it takes a lot of effort. So getting, th getting through that and having spent all that money, um, we also, as we scaled, we realized that originally we were looking at 50 megawatts, but through that same footprint, we're now at 77 megawatts. And what does that do for us? It opens again the aperture to offer, particularly for areas of the world that are looking for coal refurbishment, you know, a four plant, six plant, up to 12 modules, which is 924, approaching gigawatt size. So this today and what we're doing, we're talking, and the supply chain is critical in what we're doing. You know, our intent is to build these in the factory, they come in components and we ship them. So as we're building, the silver work is being done in the field. So that enhances the process significantly. And so where we are right now, our first commercial operations deployment, we're looking late 27, 28. Our original customer, UAMPS, which is still our customer, decided they wanted it in 27, but they don't need the energy till 29. However, we made the determination that we we're going to create that supply chain for an early delivery of 2027, 28. So that's where we are today. That's fantastic. Um, for Cosman. It, nuclear energy currently plays a significant role in providing carbon-free electricity in Romania. How will SMRs impact that role and the growth of other clean energy technologies? Thank you very much for, uh, for that question. Uh, at this point, uh, Nuclear Electrica is trying to, is producing around a third of Romania's clean energy sources through the two units it's uh, operating at Chernovoda. Uh, Romania is looking to uh, take to replace around 4.6 gigawatts of uh, coal generation uh, throughout the um, throughout the next decade. And if we look in the three C's area, we're talking about 52.8 gigawatts. Yeah. That's a major energy challenge. Um, whereas a clean base load is offered by traditional reactors such as the CANDU units that we're developing and uh, we're operating together under the guise of the intergovernmental agreement that was signed between Romania and the U.S., we see that uh, small modular reactors can help um, help the grid actually maintain its current architecture um, and they can be deployed in, in lieu of coal uh, plants but also help balance themselves out with other sources of clean energy, such as renewables. Um, if you think about renewables, they are intermittent in their nature. So having a flexible SMR on the same site or of an energy park can, um, you know, can come in in a very clean um, way to um, compensate for when the wind is not blowing or when you don't have enough sun out. So we, we definitely see this or balance the grid and come into areas that really need through the way in which SMRs are more flexible, easier to locate. And this is coming out of the study that USTDA um, funded for us and helped us out. Um, we can go into those regions that actually need energy and balance the grid and give it more resiliency, more security and more stability. So there's no blackouts so that we can continue to power our homes and, uh, you know, watch TV in the evening, and maintain jobs at the industries that are uh, energy consum uh, uh, consum uh, heavy so, consumers. Yeah, and I think this is a really interesting and important point that sometimes gets missed. Not only are, uh, you're saying not only do SMRs allow you to have more and more reliable, consistent electricity, uh, succeed coal, 
but it also enables more renewables on the grid and supports the renewables you already have. Yes, correct, because you have a very uh, easy, safe way in which you can balance uh, things out and through the modularity of new scale, and this is one particular point that we like about this technology, you, you can flexibilize your power output in ways in which you can't with a traditional reactor. So this is where the two, uh, there's the complementarity. Yeah. You have traditional nuclear as a baseload and <clears> then <throat> flexibility and balancing very well serviced through small modular reactors. That's, that's extremely helpful. One point, John, that you made before that I wanted to get back to, you talked about the process New Scale went through with the NRC. And uh, for U.S. audiences, we hear of the NRC and we think of it only in its relation to uh, licensing reactors that are going to operate in the United States in that process. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of the NRC licensing process for a company like New Scale that also wants to provide reactors to countries around the world? Certainly. Well, we made a determination we were going to go through the nuclear regulatory process, recognize that the NRC in many areas of the world is considered the gold stamp of, of regulatory, and recognize it is extremely daunting. We're hoping in many of the countries we go to could... You know, Canada is a good example. Canada right now, we also are going through the process in Canada for the VDR, but they have an agreement with the NRC, an MOU, to help share data. And I believe as we move forward globally that people don't like the word harmonization, but we can get regulatory groups working more together to help promote advanced reactors and nuclear in general, um, like we see in Canada and the U.S. and the U.K. For, for through their generic design application process. Um, it's going to speed up the process. And, you know, we've been in discussions with the regulators in uh, Romania, obviously, with the, they have the can-do reactors there. Uh, so it's going to happen. Yeah. Can, can you talk about uh, the, what are the next steps in the regulatory and licensing process in Romania? Well, the first step that we need to take uh, forward is actually to uh, develop um, um, a full-scale project at and, and one of the sites and then have that particular project authorized. Um, actually, the, the NRC approval helps a lot in, uh, in, in understanding that. And the regulator will come to review uh, the final um, detailed design and project for, 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 for the particular plant that we're looking to deploy at one of the sites that we're currently evaluating through USCDA. So um, actually having a design certification issued by NRC, should, this helps uh, a lot in, in, uh, in the evaluation. At the same time, I do have to mention that as part of the European Union, we will submit uh, an Article 41 notification to Eurodom in due time, and, and we're definitely committed to respecting and over observing all the regulatory standards to make sure that we, we, we develop this. But Romania has a history in working with the North American standard be uh, uh, industry, as it is the only can-do operator in Europe. Um, and it's uh, one of the leading, uh, is one of the members of the uh, Wano Atlanta Center. So it, uh, it, it has a history in, uh, in being um, a European company, but a country that operates nuclear in alignment with North American practices. That, that, that's helpful and it really sets up uh, my follow-up question for John on this, which is, can, can you talk a little bit more about how SMRs can help both Romania and the European Union meet its climate commitments, and uh, more broadly, as, as Cosman already discussed a little bit, how, how will SMRs interact with the existing power mix in Europe? You know, you know first let me say, um, I'm a big supporter of advanced nuclear, and I'd like to see other technologies come behind us, yeah. and there's a wave of them coming. And we did our analysis on how big is the market for small modular reactors. Often you only hear about electricity. Yeah. And what we're seeing, however, and, you know, I believe there could be wars fought over clean water. You know, that the energy to be produced, you know, reverse osmosis desalinization. Uh, hydrogen is now critically important around the world right now. We actually have a consortium of looking at how do we get hydrogen to scale. And when I say scale, you need two to 300 metric tons a day. And you gotta get that price level to where it is commercially viable. Load following. 
I mean, the, the, the tremendous success, if you look at the success renewables have gone through from where they started to where they are today in cost, however, they still have the intermittency. So yeah. we wrote a technical paper on how we complement renewables and our ability to load follow three different ways. Another big important aspect, you know, around the world. Um, we're, we're seeing a tipping point, I think, for advanced reactors right now because I believe this COP26 is really starting to promote the notion that nuclear has to be accepted in the energy mix. I started this process under President Obama, and I we won the first award from an SMR, actually the second award. It got me through five years to help get through the, the NRC. Now I'm sitting here in 26, and I hear President Biden and Secretary Perry, Perry, Kerry, <laughs> sorry, comment about the need for uh, yeah. advanced nuclear. It's, it's, yeah. it's like I said, I'm a... Uh, it's, it's what we've waited for, you yeah. know, to see this thing advance. And it's a global play. I've got a minister, a senior minister here from the Ministry of Economic Trade and Industry from Japan. It's energy security as well as climate disruption. So it is a very much a global and, play. And for both of you, I think that's such an important point in, in working together with, with New Scale and with, with many other small modular and advanced nuclear companies over the years it's always felt that nuclear would maybe part of the conversation of the next COP, mm -hmm. of the next climate strategy. Well, that, that next one appears to be here, not just in the United States, but from the announcements we've heard from Romania today, from uh, the Prime Minister of England, of the United Kingdom, from the President of France. Was there a, a, a singular event or set of tipping points? How, how did we get to this moment? Well, if I, if I may take that question, I would say that um, a lot of it has to do with, uh, with uh, realization of uh, high energy prices that are, are driven by our carbon emissions and also the, the recent events that you saw around the world in terms of climate change. So uh, obviously there's a discussion of how do we transition. And uh, in the EU over the past two years, we've had a a big uh, discussion over the taxonomy of uh, what is a sustainable uh, energy production, uh, uh, source of energy production. In that sense, if we're looking at, uh, at that, I would say that maybe the EU draw, uh, draw first line in the sense of creating a, a structured debate around this, but um, it's not enough because if we don't have a global coordination, we might end up having you know, six or seven taxonomies which will not enable capital flows or technology flows to go as smooth as they are. I want to mention that climate change is a global problem. If you emit a ton of CO2 in Bucharest, in Washington, in Delhi, you emit it for the globe. And capital is global in its nature, nature and technology should be as well. So I'm really happy that at this COP we're seeing we're strong signals in terms of inclusion of nuclear, inclusion of uh, uh, renewables and trying to set up some ESG guidelines because we would avoid having six or seven different taxonomies, which would be six or seven iron curtains in terms of what we discuss for climate change. So th this, is, this is a very positive signal for, for, for the industries overall. And it does allow countries to set up their own energy mix based on their local preferences. Yeah. Because there are countries that are very uh, rich in so, uh, solar uh, energy potential. There are countries that have tremendous opportunity for nuclear. Well, well nuclear is resilient and is not uh, dependent on uh, uh, meteor conditions. So that makes it a very good baseload. Um, and there's other countries that have different other potentials. And I think that given the signal for global cooperation can allow each one to make their own, the right energy mix and employ it in due time. John, did you want to touch on the, the changing political environment, both domestically in the United States, but also here at COP, that's led us to this moment, the number of moments around the role of nuclear for climate that we've already seen in the short time that this COP has been convened? Well, a lot of it goes out to Third Way, the Nuclear Energy Institute, IAEA. They've been such a strong supporter and promoter, and people are starting to recognize the fact that it's not a one fits all. As, as Cosman stated, each country is going to look at it differently depending on what their needs are. If it's a gigawatt size or if it's 
you know, I, I view our sweet spot right now is for coal refurbishment. You know, we're modeling with labor in the United States with the unions right now to look at how do you go from, let's say, a three to 400 megawatt plant with over 200 employees to cross train into a small module reactor. Those 200 employees, by the way, an electrician is an electrician. Yeah. A pipe fitter is a pipe. Those are the same people I need to operate this plant called New Scale. And I need 200 plus people. And by the way, it's high paying jobs. And the other thing I think is an advantage, I'm a technology provider. So from, from advanced manufacturing and starting to see countries are looking at advanced manufacturing and, and the jobs the potential within their own countries. So I think we're just kind of the spear tip right now, but as these other technologies come out, um, it, this is a, like I said, it's a, I don't believe we truly appreciate how big a market this is right now for the advanced nuclear industry. And I'd like to dovetail off of that. The synergy between coal and nuclear is well known. A lot of the countries, Romania including, took its first operators from coal uh, plants and managed to reconvert them for mm. nuclear power plants. So there's a history in doing that. And the supply chains are the same, and the co communities that were built around coal plants, they deserve a continuation of their economic future as well. And we know they have the skills that can be reconverted. Yeah. And, and can you talk a little bit more about the, the jobs and economic impact in Romania? Both, not just now, but over the next three, five, ten years, what, what is the role that SMRs and the broadening of, of a diverse and clean energy system in, in Romania look like? Sure. Well, I'll start right now by telling you that um, Romania's nuclear industry uh, has managed to save Romania around 172 million tons of CO2 uh, over the past 25 years on one end. And the second uh, point, it has uh, a contribution, annual contribution of around 600 million euros uh, to, to the GDP. Uh, in, we employ 2,300 people um, at our sites and our supply chains go up to 9,000. One six module new scale plant uh, means around 193 power plant jobs, uh, 1,500 construction jobs, 2,300 manufacturing jobs, and we add 4 million ton to the, to, the, to the 20 million tons per year that we continue to save. Um, Romania, and here's, you know, I'm taking, obviously Romania is going to have, a, 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 it has a balanced mix as it's promoted through the energy uh, plan, but let's take this assumption. We're talking 4.6 gigawatts of coal that would be, that should be replaced over the next decade. If we were to replace these with new scale plants, just taking theoretically, so you have a magnitude, we'd talk about um, over, you know, more than 2,000, uh, close to 2,000 power plant jobs, 10,000, uh, uh, 5,855 uh, 5, uh, 5, construction jobs, over 23, 24,000 manufacturing jobs, and eliminates 45 million tons of CO2 per year. If I'm to scale that to the three seas region, where we're talking about 52.8 gigawatts of coal generation, we're talking about almost 15,000 power plant jobs that could be de de delivered, 66 thousand construction jobs in the region and more than you know close to 300,000 manufacturing jobs and obviously eliminating 500 million tons of CO2 per year so the potential is enormous it really depends on how do we manage to structure these yeah. and the jobs that I'm talking are not even taking into consideration indirect jobs because once you have a power plant job and this I think we all know very well from uh, cartoon series such as The Simpsons, you go, you, you can go visit uh, uh, the local pub, you can go visit the, the restaurant and other things, which again continues the benefits to that particular community. So I love that we're now using The Simpsons as <laughs> a video on economic development and the importance of nuclear power plants. Um, we, we may need to talk to them and, and see if they can build that plot line out more. Um, John, I mean, you know, you heard Cosman just talk about the potential scope and scale. What needs to be done to uh, to continue to catalyze that? Where, where, how do we build upon this really important historic moment to ensure that there are more opportunities, not just for 
small modular reactor developers like NuScale, but also for the, the countries that are looking to both decarbonize and create more economic development for their citizens. I think a component often that is missed when we talk about building these plants is the need for, for uh, trades, you know, to have the craft who has the skill sets to do it, you know, be it welding or whatever. And so, you know, if I look around the world, there's areas of the world that have that. And I, I've been fortunate to build plants all over the world, never nuclear, but polymer plants and life sciences, and we were able to draw local labor Nuclear is a little bit different, and you know, for the welding and that, we, we have to be sure that we have those people that are skilled to do so. And so what we need to do is continue to, I just want to get one module in the ground, Josh. Yeah. I want to prove to the world, because we have a tendency in, the country, in our country to oversell, underperform when it comes to nuclear. So it, what wakes me up at night is not that this technology is going to work, it's that I'm commercially viable. Yeah that we can meet that budget and meet that schedule, it's crucially important because if we fail, it's, uh, for me, it's, we're not going to. It's not even yeah. an option. So, you know. I think it's for the climate as well, you can't fail. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, you know, and that's why it's critically important. I want to get one of these things the sooner the better up and running. And the other thing I think uh, that we're doing right now is uh, Romania will be utilized in our control room simulator yeah. for operator training, very important. I've got three universities in the United States now that have them, Texas A&M, Idaho, and um, Oregon State University. I've got another two that are looking at them, but having these ability to operate. And think, when I came to this, when before the NRC, if you have a 12-module plant, the perception was you had to have 12 operators to run that plant, one for each module. Going through the NRC and proving to them the passive safety aspects of this. For a 12-module plant, NRC only requires three operators. Significant cost reduction. Why is that? Because it's the passive safety. When people talk to me about you know, safety concerns on nuclear, I look back at my first automobile and what it was like compared to a Tesla or a Prius today. Technology advances. Advanced nuclear is called advanced because it advances. And like I said before, it's a, it's a game changer right now, I believe. It's so, a transformational industry. One other question there, because I think the perception amongst many is that the NRC, like many bureaucracies, is plotting. It's unable to adapt. If it doesn't get exactly what it expects and it is seen before, it can't evaluate it. But I mean, you just gave a, a really interesting example of how that with New Scale was not the case. Can you talk a little bit more about that and, and how the relationship has gone? Well, first you want the rigor of the NRC. It's all yeah. about safety. And but as I said before, we had to do numerous top reports. You know, when when we say we don't we don't need backup power, uh, arguably you could say if New Scale had to, to been deployable, there would have never been a Fukushima event because what happened there when the tsunami knocked out the backup power, we don't need it. We have what's called an unco unlimited coping period, which is very keen. The other thing the NRC has done, very important for coal refurbishment. In the United States, the emergency planning zone is 10 mile radius. It's a very costly process. Yeah. The NRC has stated that um, Clinch River, at the, owned by Tennessee Valley Authority, used their new scale methodology calculations for their site, and the NRC said, if it's a new scale plant, we can assume that the emergency planning zone reduction is at its site boundary. So when you think about coal refurbishment, as you build that plant, population density has moved in around it, and from a safety to say it's at the site boundary, you don't need that emergency. So they accepted that. It was daunting to get there, but they accepted it. And, and, and that acceptance was based on the data that was developed in evidence. It is because safety remains the NRC's key mission. Absolutely. So evaluating that means they concluded it was safe to make a, a more reasonable Correct. EPZ. Yeah. Right. But see, that's where all this money went to. This yeah. is where the... The cost-sharing competitive award from DOE is so important because it helped us get through that process. And it's costly. You know, we had all our equipment's been scaled up. There's no exotic metallurgy. There's no, our helical coil steam generators were tested in Via Vicenza in Italy at their lab. Um, the fuel is Framatone licensed fuel. Um, so, you know, like I said, it's all been, that's why I'm so committed to the fact this machine's going to work. Yeah. 
I just want to make sure the costs are there. And you, you mentioned the control room that you have now being built in Romania. Cousin, can you talk a little bit about that and, and what it means, both the cooperation with the State Department and, and other parts of the U.S. government, and also the opportunity to start training the next generation of workers in Romania? So we're, we're incredibly honored to be able to have one of these con uh, control rooms in, uh, in uh, our country um, uh, prior to deployment. Usually the, you buy a control room at, at the same time because um, it signals the fact that we're ready to deploy this technology and we're ready to train the next generation of operators, but also the fact that we have the... Uh, the right history to be able to be involved in training operators in this new uh, technology, not only in Romania, but hopefully for the region. Yeah. So uh, the, the State Department support in that sense in the technology transfer and the funding of this is uh, incredibly appreciated, but it, it's definitely a signal for uh, uh, the region and we're happy to contribute our skill as it has been developed over the, next, over the past years to uh, pass on best practices of nuclear operation that definitely will be transferable into this new technology, but also to um, attract a wider um, uh, base of students and workforce in, into the industry. Um, and um, we're sure that we'll be able to do so with this exciting new technology. And, and you mentioned first mover, and, and there's a lot of talk often of the first mover's advantage. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? What does it potentially mean for both Romania and the region to have a first mover advantage in deploying a small modular reactor as a key part of your electricity mix? Well, on one end, um, you come up with the most innovative solutions to help address uh, grid needs and the climate transition on one end. The second point, as a first mover, you acquire the necessary knowledge know-how and advanced manufacturing base, um, uh, operatorship training, supply chain that can help then other countries uh, deploy this technology. So from an economic standpoint, it also presents a terrific opportunity for uh, knowledge sharing and, and, and advancing and supporting uh, the overall region. And we're happy to do so within the frameworks of collaboration that is instituted by the Three Seas Initiative. Mm. Um, so uh, as we're seeing coal being replaced, um, th this new technology provides autonomous um, energy production um, in, into the region, addresses uh, grid challenges, enables renewables, and it also provides a great opportunity for collaboration, developing a, a, a supply chain that can be then basically replicated to other parts of the world. I'm just going to wrap up with one last yeah. question um, for both of you. Uh, a lot of people who've been working in or covering and engaged in energy have been waiting for this idea of a nuclear renaissance for a long time. Uh, do teaming agreements like this and the conversation around nuclear that we're starting to see at COP and, and prior to COP and the energy crisis foreshadow that this renaissance is close at hand? I, I certainly believe so. I, I think, you know, we we take that first shovel, spade in the ground, and move that first shovel to dirt, you know, then it becomes very real. But this is what it takes. Uh, this is a global event, and people are hearing a lot about it. When you have a, you know, the President of the United States and Secretary Kerry come out and promoting, and, and State Department, and, you know, even in the U.S., Josh, right now, we're seeing, you know, the former Overseas Private Investment Corp, now the the... the, the Finance Corporation, uh, DFC, have dropped their nuclear prohibition yeah. to assist in financing. Having XM with a quorum helps us to go internationally and compete against staying owed enterprises. And so it may not totally level the playing field, but it's a huge arrow in the quiver when we go out and we talk with other countries, be it Indonesia or Vietnam or wherever we're at, because Kenya, I was meeting with the energy gentleman last night from Kenya, and same thing. I mean, they all have a desire to get advanced nuclear into their countries. It's about jobs. Yeah. You know, it's about small footprint, 24-7, safe, clean.
and energy independence as well. Energy independence. Yeah. Um, I, I, in Romania, I think the nuclear renaissance has started already ever since the signing of the intergovernmental agreement between Romania and the U.S. and the major projects that have already started at Chernobyl, such as the refurbishment of Unit 1 and, and the new builds. It's now taking another step in terms of uh, a more global approach through this new technology, uh, through the partnership with, uh, with, with New Scale. I think such teaming agreements are the clear signal that uh, it, the nuclear renaissance has not just started, but it's ramping up. So we're excited. Well, one last thing yesterday, yeah, I was at a session and we talked about uh, direct air capture sequestration. We talked about desalinization. We talked about hydrogen production. Um, if you think of all those sources, it re they're energy hogs. They require a lot of energy. And so the, re the small modular reactor or advanced nuclear is an answer to them to provide that. I mentioned we have a consortium for hydrogen. What it takes to get it to scale and to get it commercialized it takes a lot of energy. And so th that's the part of the market I think where advanced nuclear is going to really benefit. So we're at a point where we're, we're going to get these reactors to begin to get built online and then expand people's thinking beyond just nuclear as an electricity provider, but really being an energy service provider Absolutely. for a lot of clean energy needs. Well, thank you both so much for joining us here today. And, and thank you to the dignitaries and everyone in our audience Really enjoyed this conversation, being able to be part of the signing ceremony in this historic agreement, and also that we deliver this entire event on time, which hopefully <laughs> is a uh, good omen for New Scale and for, for the rest of these projects. So thank you very much. And after we conclude the event, we invite everyone here to join us in the reception area for a congratulatory glass of champagne. So thank you. Thank you.